How strong is India's growth really? The RBI expects it at 6.8% for FI26. The IMF sees it at 6.6%. The World Bank and the Asian Development Bank expect it at 6.5%. So we must be doing something right. Right? So here's the thing. The fiscal year has four quarters. And so far we have the data for the first quarter of FI26, April to June. And in that quarter, India's GDP growth skyrocketed to 7.8% from 7.4% in the previous quarter. Now, market economists were collectively expecting that growth would not go up, but instead slow down in this quarter, down to, in fact, 6.7%. Why? Well, because monthly trends in the sales of cars, two-wheelers, tractors, diesel, um, you know, cargo traffic, passenger traffic, corporate results, industrial production, all indicated that growth had slowed in the quarter. And yet, despite all this evidence, the government's data showed that GDP growth not just picked up, but picked up to near 8% levels. To get a sense of how high this number is for India, here is how growth has panned since 2014. If you keep aside the post-pandemic years, when the GDP crash during 2020 was followed by a surge in the following years, you will find that 7.8% growth is pretty high by historical standards. And so, with the first quarter of FI26 already coming in at 7.8%, most of these agencies were forced to upgrade their full year forecast for GDP growth. 7.8% is so high that even if you assumed growth slowing for the rest of the year, the full year growth looks in the range of 65 to 7%. And look, don't get me wrong, if India was actually growing at this rate, it would be great news. But the problem is that part of this story is a statistical illusion. Unfortunately, this doesn't get widely reported or discussed. And here's the thing, when a lie is said long enough, it starts to feel like the truth. And the truth starts feeling like the lie. So everyone has now started believing that India had a great start to the fiscal year due to the superlative growth in the first quarter. Bharat is so fast growing that the IMF has to revise its forecast upward revise karna pada 6.6% is year's growth. In the first quarter, we have seen a growth in the first quarter of 7.8% growth in the first quarter of you know, when this data was released, one of the leading news channels had called me to join a panel discussion on the state of the economy. And I told the coordinator that, look, my view is that the numbers may look great, but it hides some significant cracks in the growth story. First, this lady said, no problem, sir. You say your views, that's fine. But then half an hour later, she called saying, sorry, sir, actually, I talked to our editor. We want this show to have a positive spin. So, so sorry, sir. Maybe next time. And of course, I said no problem, but it struck me that people who would see programs like these would be under the natural impression that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the economy. And those who are saying otherwise must be anti-national. But here's the thing, since when did statistical analysis become anti-national? Hello and welcome to The Bond Economist, your one-stop destination for professional advice on the economy. My name is Aurudeep Nandi and today we answer a simple question. Is the economy really growing by nearly 8%? As always, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe. And if you'd like to contribute, feel free to scan the QR code or use the super thanks button below. First things first, what does the official data say about the state of India's growth? So as some of you may already know, there are two ways of figuring out growth in the country. One is the demand side. So mainly consumption, investment, government spending, exports minus imports. And then there is the supply side, GVA or gross value added, which is agri, industry and services. So how have these sectors performed? Well, on the GDP or the demand side of things, consumption picked up sharply, rising to 7% from 6% in the prior quarter. You can see that government spending also picked up, as did export growth. Interestingly though, investments seem to have slowed. On the GVA or the supply side, agricultural growth moderated, but still at around 4%, it's pretty solid for India. Construction growth also fell. However, manufacturing growth soared from 4.8% to nearly 8%. Growth also picked up for services like trade and logistics segment and financial real estate and professional services. Now, parts of this story make sense. The April to June quarter was before Trump's reciprocal tariffs were to kick in. So exporters may have been getting orders out in advance to avail of the lower tariffs. 
Also, because of elections in the same period last year in 2024, government spending had dropped quite a lot owing to the model code of conduct during general elections. So on a lower base, it's natural that growth rate a year later would spike up when compared to it. But there are also puzzling inconsistencies. For instance, none of the monthly indicators tracking consumption suggested that there would be a pickup in growth. Similarly, it's really weird that manufacturing growth rose so sharply at a time when companies reported weak sales and profits. And the sharp pickup in services like trade and logistics or financial real estate and professional services wasn't really matched with the trends we observed in monthly data. Now, agreed that GDP captures both the organized and the unorganized sector, which is, of course, not visible in the formal sector data. But those of us who have been tracking GDP for so long know that the trends don't diverge so much. So what's going on and what's going wrong? Well, part of the problem is the way GDP is calculated. I've talked about this before on this channel. The numbers we are talking about is real GDP, which means GDP out of which inflation has been filtered out. But in the real world, when the government goes out to collect data, say the sales of biscuits or detergents or potatoes, that data has inflation baked in. Because if you're saying that a shop has sold 10,000 rupees worth of biscuits, well, that's price into quantity. And that is known as nominal GDP. The problem with nominal GDP is that suppose the price of biscuits doubles in a year. So 10,000 rupees of biscuits become 20,000 rupees of biscuits sold. Even though the actual number of biscuits sold may not have gone up. So nominal GDP growth would say that growth is up 100%. But once you account for inflation of biscuits prices, real GDP growth is nil. So what the government does is that it takes the actual sales of things in the economy or the nominal GDP for every subcomponent. So consumption, investments, exports, etc. And then divides each by the price index for that sector or that sector's GDP deflator. And for reasons best known to the government, how it arrives at these various price deflators is a black box. But usually it's some combination of prices of what producers face or the wholesale price index, WPI, and the consumer price index, what consumers pay or the CPI. So right off the bat, I'm sure some of you are already perceiving issues that can emerge from this. There are two reasons why real GDP growth can pick up. One is if economic activity genuinely picks up, which will show up in higher nominal GDP growth numbers. Or two, if the GDP deflator or the price index falls by too much, a lower denominator will inflate real GDP. And this is precisely what has happened in this quarter. The numerator, nominal GDP growth, hasn't picked up. In fact, lo and behold, nominal GDP growth in the quarter actually fell. Despite this, real GDP growth has gone up because the denominator, that is the inflation, has come crashing down in India. You can see how both wholesale and consumer price inflation in India are currently at their multi-year lows. And this has artificially propped up real GDP growth. And it's really weird because the common practice is to refer to real GDP uh, when you're talking about the growth of an economy. But when real GDP growth is unnaturally high, while nominal GDP growth is slowing, it's basically telling you that all that glitters is not gold. Rather, it's gold-plated. Now, you could say all of, the, all of this is fine, but this is past data. You're talking about the state of the economy between April and June, which was four to five months back. Well, you are right, but the idea of all of this is to simply warn you that please watch out for a similar distortion coming up in the coming GDP data for the July to September quarter which should be out in end November. Because inflation continues to be tracking lower. Consumer price inflation in September was just 1.5% and wholesale price inflation was barely 0.13%. And so it can be reasonably expected that the price index or the GDP deflator will also likely be very low. And this will continue to inflate up real GDP growth regardless of the actual state of the economy. Look, there are many uncertainties for the economy uh, in the pipeline right now. We have the combined impact of GST cuts, income tax cuts and festive demand at a time when the rural economy is recovering. 
There's the impact of Trump tariffs on our labor intensive export oriented industries like textiles and gems and jewelry. We still don't know at the time of filming this video if India and the US managed to strike a trade deal or not. And then there's India's underlying problems of weak urban consumption and weak private investment. So no one quite knows for sure how strong or weak underlying growth will turn out to be. But watch out for voices who will cite artificially bloated real GDP growth numbers to claim that everything is hunky-dory while underplaying the impact of any other negative news. Whenever you hear such commentary, have a look at nominal GDP growth and see if it's telling the same story as the real GDP growth. For more such insights, like, share and subscribe to The Bond Economist.